Hello, this is Eric from the Legacy Class, and we are going to be looking at Chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus healing the man born blind. And there's a lot of things we can focus on because it's, it's impossible to get through the chapter in one setting, but we're going to look at some key points and aspects of it. Uh, and what I really want to focus on is the Gospel. And how the gospel is unfolded in front of our eyes, how it shows the process of salvation. Um, and that's the key that we're going to focus on. There's many other things that we can focus on that are just, uh, that are important and um, need to be looked at, but we just don't have, for the sake of time, we're going to look at just the gospel and how salvation is unfolded in front of our eyes in this story, which. I can tell you I did not see coming when I first started studying this. So I was pleasantly surprised because the study of salvation is, is something that I personally uh, have a passion for. So um, I want to start off by quoting John MacArthur, who gave a sermon on this topic. And he says, quote, it's really an, an incredible story and an, and an amazing story. The account of Jesus healing a blind man beautifully illustrates the reality of the salvation process. We sit blinded by sin, begging. We can't see God. We can't see Christ. We have no capacity to recognize the Savior. We have no way to initiate any kind of deliverance or rescue. And then God, in his mercy, Christ in his grace, finds us. That's salvation. And he reaches out to us in our blindness, and he gives us sight. And he asks, and all he asks is simple act of faith, which he empowers, and he washes us. End quote. And then that's from MacArthur and um, from one of his er earlier sermons um, on the Gospel of John, chapter 9. And that's the kind of lens I want to look at the text through, um, is, is, that, is that stance of the gospel and how it works itself out uh, in, the, in the life of people. So I'm just going to read, and then I'm going to stop at some places, and we'll talk about it. And we're going to have to, for the sake of time, we're going to have to skip a lot. Um, but I hope we can still glean a lot from this. Uh, it says in, um, in chapter 9, verse starting in verse 1, <clears throat> it says, As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So that's a common, I'll just jump in, that's a common misperception that, they, that the Jewish people had, that if you were born blind or had some affliction, you must be being punished. Um, for some reason, and yes, sin has consequences, and the life of a sinner is very hard. It's a hard road to walk, um, but that's not always the case. You can look at the story of Joseph. You can look at the story of Job. Um, it's not always the case. Um, Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents sinned, but that the work works of God might be displayed in him. Now that's powerful stuff there. Verse 3 is powerful because that what that means is that our suffering, our afflictions, our hardships have purpose. They have meaning. There's a reason why you're going through that hardship. Maybe it's to comfort somebody else. Maybe it's to sanctify you. You know, it could be a multitude of reasons that I don't know. But we know God's character, and we know that his character is good, and that he works in all things for the good of those who love him. And that should be enough for us to say, whatever situation we're in, this is an opportunity for God's grace to shine. Um, so I really find comfort in verse 3. Uh, moving on, verse 4. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. 
night is coming when no one can work. And what he's talking about there is basically day is life. Um, you know, we must work the works of him who sent me, which is God the Father. And while it is day, that's while he, you are alive. And because night is coming, you know, death is coming um, when no one can work. Um, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as Jesus is in the world, he's the one that illuminates people to see the truth. If you want to see who God is, look at Jesus. He's the light that shines in the room and fills the whole room full of light. And you can see the whole room. If you want to see who God is, you, you look to Jesus and what the scriptures testify about him. And then you get this. That's like seeing the Father. Uh, and it's it's a beautiful thing and he's the light of the world and uh it's a bold statement to make but jesus made many bold statements that are true um the next verse verse six it says having said these things he spit on the ground and made mud out of with the saliva then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him go wash in the pool of shalom which means sent so he went and washed and came back seeing. Now, you might ask me, well, what is the purpose of this? Spitting on the ground, making mud, and wiping out his eyes. And the short answer is, I don't know. And I didn't find any commentaries that really had a great answer uh, either. Um, the best thing that I found and uh, that I could see was that uh, making his eyes filthy dirty with mud and having them wash clean could be symbolic maybe but that might just be reading into the text and i don't want to do that um so i don't i honestly don't know what what the meaning of that is um so we're going to stop right there um and that shows you that this man uh that Jesus is the light of the world that brightens up uh, the hearts of men to see him. And just as he's going to make this, he just made this man able to see physically, he's going to spiritually make him able to see too. And he's going to do that with the backdrop of, un, of unbelievers who don't believe because of their pride. And that's just going to make, that's just like the blackness and then this blind poor beggar that believes it's going to be like a bright shining star that just yells out grace and mercy uh and it's it's a beautiful picture um i'm going to jump real far verse 29 this is when we get to see the hardness heart the hardness of the hearts of some of the people uh the pharisees and and uh and the uh, some of the scribes possibly it says in verse 29 <clears throat> this is this is profound and remember the man speaking here is not a scholar or a pharisee or uh an educated man probably this was a beggar that just got a sight back and listen to how an encounter with christ can change a man um listen to the listen to the wisdom and the words he says um, they say to him, uh, well, they, they start in verse 29. We know that God has spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. Now, this is the beggar speaking in verse 30. The man answered, why is this an amazing thing? You do not know where, where he comes from, yet he opened up my eyes. We know that God did not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Ne never since the world began has, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. I mean, that's, he nailed it. That guy, he didn't go to seminary. He just, he just nailed it, though. And um, that's uh, 
that's deep and that's true and that's powerful and they should have seen that but they couldn't see it they should have spiritually been able to see the truth in that and it's obvious but they couldn't see it because they were blind and it's hard to think that they couldn't see it because it's just so accurate and so true and so clear but they couldn't see it they respond and they respond in verse 34 they answered him you were born in utter in utter sin and would you teach us and they cast him out um so they couldn't take the truth um especially they couldn't take the truth from a man that was a beggar that a man that was beneath them in their eyes uh although they were blind and did not know it and that's what jesus is going to point out i'm going to read verse 35 to 41 and jesus heard that they said they had cast him out and having found him he said do you believe in the son of man he answered and who is he sir that i may believe in him jesus said to him you have seen him and it is he who is speaking to you he said lord i believe and he worshiped him jesus said for judgment i have come into this world that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind some of the pharisees near him heard these things and said to him are we also blind and jesus answered them if you were blind you would have no guilt but now that you say we see your guilt remains and it, that's scary that's scary to read and hear um but jesus came into the world um to lift up those who were cast down who are troubled with their uh sin uh he lights up a room he can light up your heart and you can see the filthiness of it and become an instant beggar for jesus uh to save you that's what he did to paul uh paul thought he was you know the pharisee of pharisee the jew of the jews the uh, persecutor of the church zealous and everything he did yet he called himself the greatest sinner that there ever was um and and counted it counted himself the worst sinner um and so the the light that jesus shines uh inside of you shows you um that you need him and empowers you to grasp him and to have that faith in him and uh, we see that um, a hard heart from pride the blindness of a heart will keep you from coming to faith and that's what keeps people from coming to faith is the pride the hard heart um, they need the grace of god and uh, god grace is free and he's a he can bestow it on whoever he wishes um and it seems like he's chosen a lot of times uh the poor uh the slave um the widows uh, the ones that, that don't seem like they would be fitting um because that's what that's what magnifies the cross and magnifies the grace of god is when people that you say lepers you're going to heal lepers and one of them at least one of them is going to believe in you really or you're gonna you're gonna use a tax collector as your disciple and you're going to use a fisherman as your disciple um yes he it magnifies the grace of god um you're going to take the most a uh, man that persecutes the church and make him make him uh convert him and make him become a man who would suffer for you and and yes he's going to take saul and make him into paul um that there's no heart that's so hard that he can't break and sometimes that's the greatest gift that all, 
of all is when he breaks your heart and lets you see it. Um, that's what leads us to Christ. Um, and spiritual blindness comes from pride. And um, they, they had so much pride that they could not see. And uh, it said that their guilt remained. What it's, what it's talking about is simply that they had the scriptures and they had the promises. And they, if anyone should have seen the, the Messiah, it would have been them. It should have been them, um, but um, but he he they did not they did not recognize him, um, and that was because they couldn't see um, because of their own hardness of their heart. So my a uh, couple questions I want to leave you with because there's so much I want to talk about, but I can't go on forever. Um, is what are some afflictions that have actually been blessings to you? Um, this man's Physical blindness led him um, to meet Jesus and be spiritually healed. Um, so what are some hardships that God has used as opportunities to shine his grace in your life? Uh, you know, Paul had three, had three times asked for a thorn to be removed from his side, um, but God gave it there to sanctify him. Is there anything in your life, any affliction, any blindness, any hardship uh, that God is using um, to grow you spiritually? Uh, that's, my, that's one of my first questions. And my second question is, how do you confront spiritual blindness? Um, how do you do it? Uh, this man uh, spoke the truth and was kicked out uh, of the synagogue. Um, are we willing to stand up for the truth and to say, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him? Uh, that's hard to say in a culture like we have today. Um, are we willing to say that, though? Um, are we willing to testify to what God's done in our life? And I don't mean testifying just the good things. Uh, or the happy things, or the non-offensive things. But are we willing to testify that he is the only way? He's not a way. He's not maybe the way for you, but not for him. He's the only way. Um, are we willing to testify that, yes, I've had some great hardships, but they've been times when God has really used those times to pour grace into me. And I am better because of it. You know, are we going to hold fast to Romans 8, 28 that says, God works all things for the good of those who love him. Uh, so I want to leave you with those two questions and see what we can come up with. You know, how has God blessed you through hardship, through, through uh, afflictions? And how, have, how will you or how can you stand up and be bold and give a testimony of what Christ has done for us um, to those who might be spiritually blind. So I know that's, those are tough questions. So you get a, you get a week and a half to prepare. So uh, I think you'll be, you'll be fine. So um, I will see you not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Okay.